welcome to another episode of Chefs and Show Homes. I'm your host, Kristen Reed, and today we are in Northridge's newest condo community, Silver Oak in the Greens on Gardner. I'm also lucky enough to have Catherine from Serendipity Bistro and Bakery. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, okay. it's Bistro and Bakery or Bakery and Bistro? Bake Shop and Bistro. Bake Shop and Bistro. Serendipity Bake Shop and Bistro. So thanks for coming today. Thank you for having me, guys. Good. So what are we going to be making today? We are going to be making a pecan pie triangle. Perfect. All right. So um, tell me about what we're doing. So we are building a dessert that has a shortbread bottom. It's like a pecan pie in the middle. And then we're going to dip some in chocolate. So we can start on that. Perfect. Um, okay. So you're going to need a mixing bowl. Okay. And um, it, the crust is very easy to make. Um, it's with sugar, coconut flour. Um, we use a serendipity flour blend. Okay. Um, it's a combination of different flours. Um, they are all 100% gluten-free, um, as well as the dessert is. Perfect. All right. So if you want to just grab um, all three of these bowls okay. and just place them just right in into there. the mixing bowl. Oops, Wonderful. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. And our sugar. And sugar. Wonderful. Perfect. We are going to add some a half cup of butter to the mixture of dry ingredients. Alrighty, and then we just mix that. Um, if you want to just add the vanilla over top. Alrighty. Wonderful. Okay. And um, the pastry cutter. What is that, this? Yes, <laughs> it okay. is very important for making our crust. Okay. Um, we are going to push down the butter and dissolve the butter into the flour mixture. Okay, so am I doing this? Sure. All right. Get right in there. <laughs> okay, so now tell me a little bit more about serendipity. I heard you guys just did an expansion, right? We did. Um, in June this uh, past summer, we expanded our bake shop. Um, we expanded the eating area. So okay. we have, we went from six seats and now we have 20 seats. Oh, great. Um, so whereas we were just a bake shop before and accommodated customers for their baking needs, now we also have um, available spots to sit and come in for lunch. Um, and we have a small menu. Oh good. And all gluten free, just so everyone knows again, <laughs> all these basic, there are these delicious treats you can get gluten free at Serendipity. Yeah. So how's this thing coming along? It's good. So the butter is all mixed in. Okay. Like you can see that there's no pieces that like are soft butter. It's all basically just a flour mixture. So from here, what I'm going to get you to do is just bring our pan that we lined with parchment paper. Okay. If you want to just place that into sure. there. You just can just mix it right like in there. Yep. Give there them. we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and if you want to pass me the pie. Okay. Pie. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's really important that for this dessert that you pack down your flour mixture. Um, that makes the next few steps of making the dessert um, a lot easier. Um, so we push it down as much as we can right into the corners. Okay. And now is coconut flour, is that something that's easy to find for, for people at home? Um, you can find it in most grocery stores now. There's a section that has um, gluten-free um, products. Okay. Um, there's different kinds of flour, almond flour, coconut flour, and it's more the specialty items that you can find in a grocery store. Okay. But if you're looking for larger amounts, we always suggest going to um, like an old fashioned foods or a dad's organic where that's primarily what they do. Yeah. Okay, well that's yeah. good to know. Um, all right, so now we just bake this bad boy? Yeah, so we are gonna bake that first layer of the crust. Um, so we're gonna throw that in the oven for about 12 minutes. Okay, at what temperature? Uh, 350. 350, all right, let's do that. Wonderful. The oven's not here. So you will bake for 12 minutes in the oven. And since we are doing this today, I came prepared. Perfect. So we have it already done. Okay. And you want to just make sure that after that 12 minutes, the um, edges are nice and golden brown. Okay, perfect. So from here, we're going to do our pecan topping. Um, we basically just add chopped pecans so that it covers the entire topping of the crust. Okay. Push it into the corners. And we are going to make our liquid mixture that goes over top. Perfect. So we're going to use that same mixing bowl. Okay. And we are going to add some brown sugar. OK. 
Okay. Am I adding this again? You bet. I'm so helpful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then you're going to mix that into here. Okay. And while you're doing that, I will be cracking three eggs and we're going to add to that mixture as well. Okay, perfect. So now Katie, tell me how we or how you got started um, gluten-free baking and, and, and tell me a little bit more about your story and your business. Well, the gluten-free baking um, happened a little bit by accident. Um, I always loved baking and cooking my entire life. Um, and when I was in high school trying to decide what I wanted to do as a career, on a whim I threw out um, an application to a culinary school in BC. Okay. Um, but I also um, accepted, or I also um, tried to get into school for soccer. Okay. Um, so through that, I was accepted to the bar to play soccer. Um, perfect. We're going to add the eggs now. Okay. Um, so with taking that scholarship for soccer, um, I kind of put my cooking days on hold. Okay. And in my second year at university, I actually tore my ACL. Oh. Um, so that in injury um, resulted in me getting surgery. Um, from the surgery, um, which we didn't know at the time, but uh, the celiac was triggered in my body from the general anesthetic. And I was sick for about seven months without us knowing what was making me sick. Yeah. Um, I lost about 30 pounds. I was losing my hair. Uh, I had rashes on my hands. Uh, I ran a low grade fever for about six weeks. Wow. So, Without knowing, my body was just malnourished. Right. And I was diagnosed um, celiac. Okay. So once I was diagnosed celiac, um, I kind of went into a little bit of a grieving period where food just didn't taste the same, which yeah. it doesn't. Um, and especially 10 years ago, there wasn't as many options as there is now. Right. Um, so trying to decide what I wanted to do from there, soccer kind of took a back seat for a while just because my body wasn't in good shape. Right. Um, and through that, I reconnected with the culinary school that I got accepted into, and I found out that I wouldn't be able to um, cook or taste test anything that I'm making there. So from there, I decided it wasn't a good idea, and yeah. I decided to just do it on my own. Right. So um, I started Serendipity um, with the help of my mom, and um, started baking gluten-free, cooking gluten-free, and it started with um, a catering business. That was my way to get my name out there, build some clientele without having um, a large sum of money to then open a restaurant right away. Right. I wanted to start it small and build it. Yeah. And you started by bringing these little triangles around, right? Yes. Okay. So this was one of the items that I went around to different cafes in the city to see if they would carry my gluten-free product. Yeah. There was definitely a need for it in the city. So we're going to add that mixture over top. Okay. Um, I usually start from the edges and then it kind of goes towards the middle. Okay. Yeah. So I went to different places in the city to try and get my product so that other people that were gluten-free or celiac would feel safe to have a, a dessert there. Dessert, it's a, it was a hard um, thing to find as a gluten-free person. Right, yeah. Well, that's great. I'm glad that you, uh, you found that niche and that you're killing it in Regina. You're very busy. Um, and now, so we're gonna bake this, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so once this mixture is all on top, we're gonna throw it in the oven for 30 minutes. And um, once it comes out, we're gonna let it set up um, I usually let it bring to room, room temperature. Okay. And then I throw it in the freezer or the fridge for about three hours. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Well, while we do that, um, Rod is here and he's gonna give us a tour of, uh, of their newest show homes. So stay tuned and we'll be right back with the home tour. Right, so now giving us the house tour today is Rod from Northridge. Um, thank you for being here today. Thank you. And having us in your beautiful show home. Oh, you're welcome. Perfect. And so now, not only do we get to cook in one of their kitchens, but we get to view two of them um, because they do have their show homes side by side in the new Silver Oaks um, development. So can you tell me a little bit more about your show homes and what you guys are doing here? Okay, well, we have two show home models. Uh, the first one is our bungalow, our canopy plan, 1,200 square foot bungalow with a double car garage. And this one is a two-story townhouse. Uh, it can come with two bedrooms, three bedrooms, two bedrooms and a den, and a single or a double car garage. So we have them both side by side when people come out to Silver Oak. 
Oh, nice. And now some of the finishes, because they're both decorated very differently. Yes. This one is a real light, trendy home, uh, almost white walls, light floors. And as you notice behind us, we have the blue cabinets, yeah. which are, are a little bit shocking, but it's a very popular color for kitchen cabinets right now. Yeah, that, and that's interesting to hear. I mean, yeah. I, I love it. I love yeah. the bold, uh, the, the bold blue, but it's still subtle and undertoned. Like it's not yes. in your face. Right. Yeah. We um, um, on some of our unfinished units, we do spec and put in our own uh, kitchens. We have our our specialists at the office pick the colors for the kitchens. Mostly, though, we go with the safe colors in white. But we do have some homes that we don't uh, finish the, the uh, do the interior finishes. So someone can buy one of these homes, pick their flooring, pick their cabinets and their countertops, and either copy the show home or get something exactly the way they want it. That's really nice. And another thing that I really like is that you don't have to cut the grass here. No, you don't. Uh, the homes come either with a big uh, deck or a uh, backyard with uh, artificial turf. Perfect. And so you can come in and literally have a barbecue in your backyard the weekend you move into your new home. That's really exciting. If the weather will hold up. Yeah, no, well, yeah, yeah Regina. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and now, so condo fees, what, is, what does that include? Um, the condo fees in are uh, $150 a home here. And that includes your uh, maintenance of all the common areas, cutting the grass, shoveling the snow in the winters. Uh, they clean the windows a couple of times a year. It also includes your homeowner's insurance for the, for the building itself, which is a big expense that when you buy a, a home that people don't usually uh, think about. Right, and do you still recommend that they would get like a tenant insurance in addition yes, to? Yes, they get, it's a condominium insurance, mm -hmm. uh, homeowner's insurance, and that covers the contents of your home okay. and um, any upgrades that you might have done. And it's not very expensive. It's a very reasonable priced insurance. Oh, good. Um, okay, is there anything else in terms of finishes that we should talk about here? Well, this one again uh, is extremely light colored and, mm -hmm. and a little unusual for, for Saskatchewan. Again, from California, we do white walls and light colored homes. And so I've used some of those ideas in this one. Yeah, I really like that. I think that it's becoming more and more popular now, except for people with little kids. Except I, for people with little yeah, kids. Yeah, people with little kids, you want the darkest walls possible yeah. to keep all those little fingerprints yeah. off of them. This, this uh, project is more, uh, uh, we're finding uh, people who don't have children, either seniors, not seniors, but empty nesters, we call them, that uh, the family has uh, uh, moved out of the big home and um, the people wanted to downsize. They want a bungalow so there's no stairs for if they have any uh, accessibility issues. And then these townhouses were finding a lot of young professionals or single people who have uh, changed uh, their personal status in their life and are now living alone and, and, and want a condominium, again, where everything is taken care of. Right, yeah, and I mean, talking too about um, convenience and things being taken care of, just the location of this in general. I yes. mean, it's so close to everything. Right, we have, uh, it's, it's quite surprising. We have um, uh, these townhomes that we're also building in our Tamarack project this, across this uh, street in the creeks, and yet we have a lot of people preferring this location because we're right beside the new Acre 21 shopping center. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a, a Save On Foods, a liquor store, the McDonald's that we talked about, yeah. a Dairy Queen, and a few other new stores opening up. And um, you know, now I find myself, because I live in the creeks, on the way home, do I stop at Save On Foods and get dinner for the night, or am I going to cook? And I, it's changed my life totally. Oh, there's also a co-op gas station. And so, boom, if I need gas, I've got it. If I need yeah. my food, I've got it. And then the liquor store. So everything's really handy. Yeah, it's, this area is just so convenient. It has really changed this area. Yeah. For, for me especially, I really noticed the difference. And I know uh, people, my friends who live around us, are really appreciating the new, the new shopping center. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, well great. Um, why don't we continue on and we'll take a look at the, the rest of the house here and chat a little bit more. Okay. Regina is full of flavor and style. I'm Kristen Reed, your local realtor and host of Chefs and Show Homes. Get to know this amazing community through the eyes of the most talented local chefs and creative home builders. Discover the finest food and living Regina has to offer. Elevate your life only on Access 7. All right, so we're downstairs now, and uh, I love how you guys have finished this space, and the windows are so nice and big and bright. Um, tell me a little bit more about like customizations and what okay. people can do down here. Well, this is optional space for the buyers, and we've had most of the buyers take and develop the lower level. Uh, we can do almost anything they want. 
Uh, this one is set up with two bedrooms and uh, of course the poker table at the back and a TV area. We have people putting in custom bars, changing things around, putting pool tables in, and, and we're very open to making them or letting the buyer uh, make some decisions on how they want their lower level to be planned out. That's great. And now Northridge is a local Saskatchewan builder. Can you tell me more about their history? Yes, that's correct. It started in Prince Albert, but um, in uh, 1985, but we um, moved to Saskatoon. We are the largest builder in Saskatoon, and we're one of the larger builders here in Regina as well. And we are a real Saskatchewan company. Not too many can say they're a Saskatchewan home builder. We're a Saskatchewan home builder. And again, we pride ourselves on customer satisfaction and uh, giving a high level of service to our buyers. That's great. Are you guys um, only in Saskatoon and Regina, or do you, do you service any smaller communities at all? We have serviced smaller communities, um, Humboldt, Swift Current, and uh, Prince Albert as well. Okay, and are you finding that those markets have slowed down and that's why you're not necessarily in them? Or um, yes, they have slowed okay. down too with the rest of Saskatchewan. Yeah, for sure. And so now tell me a little bit more about what's, what you're seeing on your end with the, the whole builder's um, development side. Well, obviously the home building market has slowed down, the real estate market in Regina has slowed down. Uh, we've tried to differentiate ourselves from other home builders. Uh, we were in the townhouse market, and we still are in the townhouse market, but so many other builders have gone into that market as well. So now we're trying to differentiate again, and our Tamarack project uh, in the creeks, which is the uh, townhouse condominiums uh, with garages, and then this project, which is bungalow condominiums uh, with double car garages, show that we are in our own market segments where we really don't compete with any other builders. Okay, and so aside from floor plans, how else do you guys differentiate yourself from the other builders? Um, well, we like to uh, have a style that is um, brighter and more open, and that comes from my California days, okay. uh, where I've, I've taken California concepts and, and brought them to uh, Regina, and I love the open kitchens. I love the bright colors, and, and my first years here, people were saying, we've never seen such bright colors in houses before. Yeah. And um, I like lighter colors in houses, too. Yeah, yeah, it just makes it feel so much more open and airy and spacious. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and especially in the townhouses where they don't have too many windows. Mm -hmm. uh, that's another thing. I put lots of big windows in all of our homes. So you look at some of our townhouses, you see all these big windows go, wow, I've never seen so many windows. But that brings the light in and makes the home brighter and more fun. Definitely. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more about oh. like your story, how you came to yeah. be, how you came to be with Northridge? Sure. I was I a home builder in California and uh, high, high end homes. So my last project was eight, four million dollar homes. In, in a, a very different market. And when the 2008 housing crisis hit, my $4 million homes became $2.5 million homes almost wow. overnight. And, and uh, it was so uh, uh, depressing there almost is a good word for it, that I, I wanted to change it. And now, okay, so now you've been through the worst crash in the US, yes. and now you're here in Regina where things have slowed down, the market is definitely not what it used to be, but I, I personally don't think the sky is falling and all hope is lost yes. here, but maybe you can give another perspective of well, that. We're, um, to me, this is not a crash, it's just a little adjustment, and mm -hmm. actually we're doing better this year than we did last year and maybe even the year before. Yeah. We're having a nice, a very good year. What lessons did you learn well, um, from that market that you've brought here? Well, don't overspend, that's the first <laughs> thing. <laughs> don't buy too much house, but um, uh, the one big difference there uh, in land developments is the land developer would segment the markets and he would invite a builder in to do a certain product and then the next builder to do something different so that the builders in a subdivision wouldn't be competing with each other. Uh, here that's not the case. The, it seems that the land developers will supply land to uh, the builder with whatever they're looking for. And unfortunately we get on a trend where townhouses are hot for a while so we, we go down to everybody building townhouses or small single front drive garage houses are, are the market and everybody sort of follows that bandwagon. Mm -hmm. uh, we like to be a little bit different and that's why you're seeing this bungalow condominium uh, and it, it does give us a differential, uh, differentiates us from the rest of the builders which is what we're after and I think it's a better way to to market sure. our homes. Yeah, and so then the developer would choose basically the types of homes that the builders would build or would they kind of, would they you know, they actually, the they actually uh, invite a builder in and say, we want you to build this type of product. Maybe it's townhouses in one area, duplexes in another, small single family, and then large single family, and then they, they market the project 
and people aren't competing with each other. They're selling the whole development is a great place to live. Okay. And now what about the floor plans in, in those areas? Would those differ at all or would those be they, standard? They would differ as well. If you look at our finishes in our homes, um, we are right very, very close to the latest designs in California. And I, I really think that most of the builders here are, are very current with their floor plans as yeah. well. Uh, and, and so, and even the finishes, we are very similar now to what California is offering. Mm -hmm. and, and I regularly go down to California and get the latest ideas for here and see if I'm missing something. But we're very, very close. Now, we're hampered by the weather conditions. And, and our homes in Regina, that's the other thing I should mention, our homes in Regina are built so much better than California homes. Well, we have to. <laughs> yes, we have to. The triple <laughs> the pane extremes. windows, when California just got double pane windows not long ago, that's, yeah. that's one extreme. And then how we seal our homes. Yeah. And, and then also the quality of our finishes is very, very high. Yeah, for sure. Um, and now with the buyer's trends too, I know you had mentioned like you're trying to differentiate yourselves, mm -hmm. which is obviously a very important part. But then what I noticed too is all my buyers are looking for the same thing at the same time. Like they all want the same colors. They all want the same yes, floor plans. Yes. And so how do you um, get around that? Well, we find that this is really surprising, but we find the first time buyers really follow and want about the same thing. Mm -hmm. This project here has mature buyers and they are, are, are coming in with their Pinterest ideas and, and uh, wild colors, and we have buyers choosing like things like blue cabinets with gold handles and, and bright colors where we don't normally see that in our other lower price point segments. So it's like the, uh, the older the buyer, the more risk they're willing to take, which yeah. is fun to see. For sure, yeah, I love that people are willing to be more bold in their finishes and homes. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's, it, it's nice to see the difference. It makes it very interesting. You come into a new home and you see colors that we wouldn't risk on a spec home, right. but there they've gone ahead and done it in their homes. You go, wow, that's really something that works. Yeah. yeah, and now obviously looking at um, from a resale perspective, mm -hmm. um, have you had any of your clients that maybe picked some crazy colors that are maybe having trouble selling in this market? Or? We, we haven't had too many uh, recently come on the market. Uh, so that one's a hard, uh, difficult question uh, to answer. Uh, you know, it used to be when I got here, I've been here six years, it was 80%, 90% of the market was brown cabinets, dark brown cabinets. Yeah. And uh, we've switched over 80% as white cabinets, but now we have a lot of blue cabinets, gray cabinets, beige, beige colored cabinets. Mm -hmm. And then we used to do granite uh, countertops and now it's almost all quartz countertops yeah. and a solid look, not a uh, heavy patterned and bold look. Right. Yeah, for sure. Well, I like that too. So good. It yeah. makes it easier to sell on the resale side. It, does. Time it sure does. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for your information. Um, we're going to go back upstairs and check on Catherine and, uh, and we'll see you guys up there. So once your pecan pie um, has set up, it'll be easy to just to pull out with the parchment and you're going to set it onto a cutting board. You can pull the parchment right down and then we are going to cut it as so. Got a lot of muscle in there. You really <laughs> kind of got to have to put a little elbow grease into it. And then um, we tend to cut them in half and then into uh, rows of three. So for what we sell at the bake shop, it is a size similar to this and then cut into threes and cut into a triangle. It smells delicious. As so. Perfect. Um, what we do at the bake shop is we melt half, I mean we melt chocolate and we dip half in chocolate. So I usually put a nice glob and paint half of that triangle as so. Beautiful. Just like that. Do you want to try doing one? Yeah, sure, why not? There we are. Got some skills. <laughs> it's still messy, but a little less messy. It is still messy, messy. <laughs> yeah. I think I got this down. We you found, guys hiring? <laughs> we found that the customers definitely like the painted chocolate ones. We always leave a few without for people that don't like chocolate. Yeah, it's good yeah. to have a little both. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not as pretty, but. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for uh, being with us today and showing us how to make these yummy treats. Um, so you guys will have to go down to Serendipity for lunch and pick up some of their treats as well as call them for any catering. You bet. All right. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks. 
Discover the finest food and living Regina has to offer as I learn to cook from the chefs behind Regina's best restaurants and explore the design trends from the builders creating the most beautiful new homes in Regina. Now that is quite a fancy little trophy there. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yes, we're really proud at Northridge of that. This one is the 2015 Avid Diamond Award for all of Canada for the highest satisfaction in multifamily home building. And on Wednesday, we just found out that we won the 2018 award as well. Right, and so all of Canada. All of Canada. The best condos in all of Canada. Yeah. This has taken uh, a survey of homeowners after they've had their first year in their new home um, and how satisfied they are with their builder. Oh, perfect. That's that's really a great achievement. So congratulations oh, thank you. Thank on that. Thank you very much. Good. And now maybe tell me a little bit more about this development itself. Um, now, what phase are you in and when are you building out? Okay. This is our Silver Oak development and uh, it is a a combination of bungalow and townhouse condominiums. There haven't been a lot of condominiums uh, in the bungalow style built in Regina for quite a few years and we kept hearing will you build a bungalow condominium. So we came out with uh, Silver Oak. We have three different bungalow floor plans about 1200 square feet each with double car garages and they're ideal for people whose families have moved away they uh, don't need the big home anymore and they spend their uh, winters maybe in San Diego, which we both like, <laughs> or Phoenix, Arizona, or Mexico, and their summers at the cottage. But they still want a home large enough uh, uh, for themselves. And then in this one, we have the basement developed. If the family comes home, the uh, kids and the grandchildren, we've got lots of space for them. That's great. And, uh, and now what phase are you guys in right now in this We're development? in our second phase. We're about half sold and we've just started this project uh, put on the market in February. So we've done very, very well with it. Especially in a slow market where there's a ton of condos on the market and you guys are killing it and yes. selling. We've been doing very, very well with this product. Um, now, is there anything else you'd like to chat well, about? This is our canopy floor plan. And uh, as I said, we have three different floor plans of our bungalows. This one has this big curved island, as you can see, that yeah. is really popular. Uh, it's, it's an entertaining home. Mm -hmm. uh, you have your friends over and you can lay out all your food uh, or your adult beverages on the bar here yeah. and enjoy a football game where everybody feels a part of the, uh, uh, of the room. If you're in the kitchen working, you still feel a part of the party. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I, obviously a lot of the new open floor plans, that's kind of just how it goes these days. Yeah. Everyone wants to be a part of everything while still being in the kitchen. Right. Yeah, right. it's always the best place yeah. to entertain. And again, this one has the curved bar. I don't know of too many other builders that offer curved bars in their kitchens. No, yeah. they, they don't. Yeah, no, I've been into to many and I don't yeah. think there's any that do. So you're very unique there as well. Oh, thank you. Oh, good. Well, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us today and giving us a tour and talking about Northridge. And uh, we really appreciate that. Excellent. So let's dig into these streets that Catherine oh, yes. from Sarah Dippity made for us. And we'll see you guys next time.